The state of South Australia contains eight different wine growing zones and accounts for over half of the country's production, which in recent decades has grown to over a billion litres of wine. What makes Barossa special? Well, how long have we got and where should I start? <laughs> The Barossa Zone only produces about 10% of Australian wine, but it has always been the country's most iconic and prestigious region, especially for premium quality Shiraz. Dutch navigator Willem Jantz was the first European to land in Australia in 1606. The continent was later colonized after English explorer James Cook charted New South Wales in 1770. South Australia was largely settled by German-speaking Lutherans fleeing religious persecution, a legacy that can still be seen in the family names of many wineries. Many of the vineyards around the Barossa are owned by sixth, seventh generation families who were immigrants from Germany or Prussia back in the 1850s. When the first uh, settlers came out from uh, Prussia, they experimented with different crops, and vines is one of them. Fortunately, vineyard is what really took off. That community has remained very strong and very consistent over time. So there were a number of importations of grape vines that came into Australia. Vines undoubtedly came with the first settlers, but it was James Busby, often considered the founding figure of Australian wine, who brought significant collections of Vitis vinifera from continental Europe. Most of the vine material from the early days, and a lot of what's in South Australia because of the quarantine that came in after phylloxera was discovered, came from those early selections. Due to effective quarantine and the region's sandy soils, the Barossa was never affected by phylloxera, resulting in a wealth of very old vines, with examples of both Shiraz and Grenache dating to the 1840s. Early winemaking in the Barossa would probably pretty much have been driven by fortified wines. Fortified wines dominated production until the 1960s, with over 80% of winemaking focused on so-called sticky styles of sweet wine. And then it was the late 60s when people started turning their tastes towards table wines to dry reds and whites. So then the Barossa started making a lot more table wines. There is still some amazing fortifieds made in the Barossa, whether that's vintage fortifieds or tawnies that are aged for, for many decades. The climate overall, we would describe as a Mediterranean climate. In the Barossa, we have typically very dry, uh, warm summers, and most of our rain falls in late autumn, winter and spring, and then we have another beautiful, dry, uh, low humidity summer. Most of our wind comes from the south and southwesterly, so there's an element of oceanic influence, but not in the same way that you'd have in an obvious maritime area like Marlborough. So on a warm day as the hot air is rising, the wind will come down out of the hills and across the plain. And then at the end of the day, as it starts to descend, it also reverses. So literally you've got this little part of the Barossa Ranges at the base of the hills, breathing in and breathing out during the day. Dry summer weather and frequent winds reduce disease pressure, allowing producers to more easily adopt organic or biodynamic farming. Low rainfall, intense sunlight, and the potential for fires create other challenges for growers. Notoriously, the Barossa is a very low rainfall district. It reduces the crop load. It creates an incredibly intensely flavored crop, but it just means the volume of wine we make is quite small. Barossa zone includes three geographic indications. The Barossa Valley and the cooler Eden Valley were established in 1987. In 2001, the High Eden subregion was added within Eden Valley. The Eden Valley is a little bit higher, it's a little bit rockier, the soils are a bit thinner, and as a result of that altitude, it's a little bit cooler. The Barossa Valley itself, though, is a little bit lower in elevation, it's a little bit warmer, and it's a little bit more alluvial. So right in the middle of the day, the temperature in the Barossa Valley and the Eden Valley would probably be about the same. But at night time, the temperature drops much lower in the Eden Valley. It cools down more quickly in the afternoons. It takes longer to warm up in the morning. Since most of the continent remained free of ice sheets during recent ice ages, Australia has some of the oldest soils on Earth. Within the Barossa, there is a diverse range of soils, including alluvial, loam, clay, sand, and schist. A lot of the rocks under the vineyards are both from lava or deep under the 
the ground, such as the granite at the start of the Eden Valley, and then a lot of the ironstone and limestone are sea derived. So we have a coming together of some very complex rock and soil profiles. Although the northern part of the Eden Valley region where we are at the moment has red brown earths, very, very suitable for beautifully perfumed Shiraz, the southern part of Eden Valley is acidic sandy loam, beautiful for Riesling. Barossa is blessed with a legacy of old vines and is one of the few regions in the wine world with a classification system for vine age. The old vines of the Barossa are really special for us and, and really important. Uh, we're very lucky that in South Australia and including the Barossa, we've never had phylloxera. So the early vines that were planted here in the 1840s and 1850s, many of those are still growing on their own roots. We have some of the oldest Shiraz um, and Grenache in the world. And that's the beautiful thing about the Barossa being phylloxera free is it does mean that we've got all these really old vines on own roots producing these really good, rich, robust wines. We've got the legacy of some of the oldest genetic material in the world. And the Barossa Old Vine Charter, we have our, our old vines at 35, our survivor vines at 70, our centenarians at 100, and then our ancestor vines, which are 125 years old or older. Shiraz is Australia's best known grape and by far the most planted variety in Barossa. More than 50% of the vines planted in the Barossa, so Barossa Valley and Eden Valley are Shiraz. So it is the variety of the Barossa. It's a variety everybody knows. I think one of the reasons that Shiraz does so well here is that it is just super suited to the red brown earths, the soils, and also the climatic conditions. But I suppose it's fair to say that Barossa Shiraz is always going to have lots of beautiful flavour. It's going to be full bodied. It's always going to be something that people are going to enjoy. Cabernet Sauvignon is the second most planted red grape and yields wines with plush black fruit and ripe tannins. While not as well known by consumers, Grenache makes some of the most exciting red wines in South Australia. Grenache is something that's becoming incredibly interesting in the Barossa. So years ago, Grenache was typically used for making fortified wines. A lot of the Grenache has remained in the Barossa, so there is a lot of vineyards that are 50, 80, 100 years old throughout the Barossa. As a more medium-bodied style, as a really interesting counterpoint to the more full-bodied Shiraz wines, Grenache is absolutely, uh, you know, setting the world on fire at the moment. So I think the bush vines, especially for varieties like Grenache, they let a lot of nice sunlight into the canopy, into the vine. It also means there's low disease pressure as well. But that sunlight just gives nice full flavours and very even ripening. Mataro, also known as Morvedra, yields a gamey, dark-fruited wine, but it's most often blended with Grenache and Syrah. Viticulturally, it's uh, lovely to tend in the vineyard. It has a vigour to it, so in a dry climate, it can still produce good shoot length, good, good bunch weight. Barossa Riesling has become a benchmark for dry and racy examples of the notoriously finicky grape. While grown throughout the zone, Riesling is a particular specialty of the Eden Valley. Dry Riesling from the Eden Valley is a very famous wine uh, from the Barossa and starting to become more and more appreciated around the world as well as within Australia. Semillon is better known in the Hunter Valley, but Barossa also offers delicious renditions, which tend to be richer in style, although some producers have shifted toward leaner expressions. If you do find some of those beautiful Barossa Valley Semillons, they are beautiful wines. They're beautiful and expressive and flavorful as young wines, and they also age very well. Experimentation with Mediterranean varieties has generated recent excitement, especially with younger producers. Monte Polciano is seeing particular success along with limited examples of Italian grapes, including Nero Davola, Fiano, and even Nebbiolo. So don't dismiss the Barossa as just a, a, a one-trick pony for, for reds. It's, uh, it, there's lots of different uh, varieties and styles you can, you can find here. Barossa style is very generous. We tend to get a lot more weight and power in our wines as compared to a lot of other areas in Australia. Generally, Barossa wines have a gentler touch now than they might have had 20 years ago, probably less extracted, less new oak. The style has evolved to picking a little bit earlier so things aren't quite as ripe, not quite as alcoholic, and just having better freshness, balance and vitality in the wines and also using uh, classier oak that isn't so dominant in the wines. 
While Barossa is most associated with ripe and intense red wines, the recent evolution has resulted in a broad array of styles that can appeal to diverse tastes. The industry's rich tradition paired with its ability to adapt suggests that Barossa's wines will only improve in the years to come. The future of the Barossa is bright. Uh, we've got a great new generations coming through. We're holding on to what we've always had and we're holding it very dear to our hearts. I think there is an, an openness in terms of the young people who looking at what can be done, not just what has been done in the past. I also think there's a general openness in the Barossa from the generations that have been here forever as well. And I think this mix of respect for older ways and techniques mixed with newer ideas and less care about conventions is exciting in itself. Guildsom is a non-profit membership organization for wine professionals. Visit guildsom.com to become a member and gain access to all of our education content, in-person classes, and a global network.